shout with a voice of triumph. Let's shout with a voice of praise. Come on and shout with a voice of triumph. Shout, shout with a voice of praise. Yes. Oh, shout thank unto Lord. God for the victory. Hey, hey, give the Lord oh, yes. a shout thank of praise. The Lord. So I will shout with a voice of triumph, shout with a voice of praise, shout with a voice of triumph, shout with a voice of praise, shout unto God for the victory. So I will shout with a voice of triumph. Come on and shout with a voice of praise. Yes, I will shout with a voice of triumph. Shout with a voice of praise. Shout unto God for the victory. I've got 
got the victory. I've got the victory. Shout for the victory. Shout if you've been set free. Shout for the victory. Shout if you've been set free. Shout for the victory. Shout if you've been set free. Shout for the victory. Shout if you've been set free. Shout. So I will shout with the voice of triumph. Shout with the voice of praise. Shout with the voice of triumph. Shout with the voice of praise. Shout unto God for the, the victory. victory. Hey, hey, give the Lord a shout of praise. Oh, yes, indeed. Shout with the voice of triumph. Come on and shout we'll with thank the voice you, Lord. of praise. Shout with the voice of triumph. Yeah, yeah. Shout with the voice of Well, praise. thank you, Lord. That's right. Shout unto God for, for the, the victory. victory. Hey, hey, give the Lord a shout of praise. Oh, come on, lift your hands. Give him a shout of praise. Oh, he's worthy of all of our praise. Hallelujah. Worthy. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. It's good to be here this morning. Good to, I'm so thankful that you're here. And uh, at this time, I want our ushers to come. Don't forget to look at your bulletin. We have many things coming up. And uh, the singles conference, you can register. And uh, don't forget that. We've got children's Sunday school training uh, this this weekend at the uh, Eastview. And, and listen, if you're in, in leadership here and you want to go to that, um, just register. It's $25, and the church will cover that for you, uh, especially our leaders. And uh, if, you're, if you're a leader here, uh, we will cover that for you. And uh, all right, let's pray as we give. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this offering. God bless it. Uh, to the furtherance of your kingdom. God, I pray that you'll bless those that give, bless those that don't have to give. And I ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Oh, yeah. Mighty in battle, Lord over all. King of creation, you are my God, worthy of honor, we give you all praise. Let every nation bow at your name, mighty in battle, Lord over all. King of creation, you are my God, worthy of honor, we give you all praise. Let every nation bow at your name. We have got the victory, it's already done. Lift up your voice and shout. The battle's not ours, it's already won. Lift up your voice and say, We have got the victory, it's already done. Lift up your voice and shout. The battle's not ours, it's already won. Lift up your voice and say, Victory in his name. My day in battle. Lord over all, King of creation, you are my God, worthy of honor, we give you all praise, let every nation bow at your name, mighty in battle, Lord over all, King of creation, you are my God, worthy of honor, we give you all praise, let every nation bow at your name, we have got the victory, it's already done. Lift up your voice and shout. The battle's not ours, it's already won. Lift up your voice and say, We have got the victory, it's already done. Lift up your voice and shout. The battle's not ours, it's already won. Lift up your voice and say, Victory in his name. If you want the victory,
the veil is torn, the door swings wide. I run inside the pool. The is torn, the door swing wide. I see glory as I run inside the throne room. Before you, I bow. Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That our Sunday school went back. Thanks, Lord. standing on holy ground and I know that there are angels all around let us praise Jesus now Hallelujah. Standing in his presence on holy ground. Let's do it again. We are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around let us 
us praise Jesus now. Hallelujah. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. One more time. We are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. Come on, lift your hands right now. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we love you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I worship you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your presence in Jesus' name. Thank you, praise team. Appreciate the Lord. I'm going to read one verse of scripture and then I'll have you sit down. Thank you, Lord. Acts, the fourth chapter, and the 31st verse, the Bible says this, and when they had prayed, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and spake, they spake the word of God with boldness. And read it again, and, and when they had prayed, and when they had prayed, Pray. the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. I thought they were already baptized in the Holy Ghost. They were. Right. Acts chapter 2. But when they had prayed, <laughs> yeah. when they had prayed, when they prayed, yeah. the place was shaken. They were filled. Yeah. Once again, every time we come in this place, if we will pray <laughs> yeah. and allow God to move, God will meet us where we are, every, every time we gather together, we have an opportunity to host the presence of the Lord. And when they prayed, and when they prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spake the word of God with boldness. You may be seated. Father, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you would just move and help me teach this morning. And I ask you, Lord, that those that don't know how, I pray that they'll come away from here with a greater understanding of prayer, its necessity, right. and how to pray. And I ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen and amen. There's one thing I can tell you is that the early church was a praying church. They just did not pray when they came together. They were a praying people. I mean, you can just read a cursory reading of the book of Acts and you will see they knew how to pray. Yeah. They gathered in one accord to pray in Acts 1 and 14. And they prayed over a business meeting in Acts 1 and 24. They prayed consistently from house to house in Acts 2.42, and they prayed at the hour of prayer. At the hour of prayer, in Acts 3 and 1, they prayed when they were persecuted, Acts 4 and 31. They prayed continually, Acts 6 and 4. They prayed for local ministries, Acts 6 and 6. They prayed for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Acts 8 and 15. Others requested prayer from them. The great Others requested prayer. Why? Because they knew, they knew how to pray. All right. They, they, they knew that prayer was not just something they talked about, but they actually did. They prayed. They prayed. They prayed for a dead girl to be raised, and she was. Why? 
Because they were already praying people. You want to see miracles? You want to see signs? You want to see wonders? Then we must pray. Hallelujah. We must be a people of prayer. God's expecting us to pray. Pray. A Gentile prays to God continually and he's heard before his conversion in Acts 10 and 2. Prayers are said to come up for a memorial before God in Acts 10 and 9. Some 32 verses in 28 chapters in the book of Acts mention prayer. Prayer saturated everything that the early church did. Well, prayer is not an option. It's a necessity. We must pray. And if you record the words of their prayer, like Acts 4, they used words. They used words. They just didn't utter and repeat the same thing over and over again. There are times when that's what we have to do. I know there's times when we say Jesus. That's all we know to say. But prayer is communication. Prayer is a dialogue, not a monologue. Hallelujah. In other words, when we pray, we should expect to what? Hear. That's another message. But I wonder this morning, you heard the voice of God Have you heard the voice of God? Has God spoke to you when you prayed? That is commonplace. God speaks and he speaks clear. I'm not talking about an impression. I'm talking about words. I'm talking, God wants to speak to you. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a bishop. You don't have to be a sexual overseer. God wants, oh, hallelujah, he wants to speak to you. He, he wants to speak to you. Somebody said, don't be saying that, God. Listen, God will never speak outside of his word. That's true. That's a, that, li, listen, but God wants to speak to you. Thank you, Lord. Prayer is not an option. 1 Samuel 12 and 23 says, Moreover, as for me, this is Samuel said, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. According to Samuel here, prayerlessness is a sin. Psalm 65 and 2, O thou that hearest prayer unto thee, shall all flesh come. Isn't that great? What an opportunity we have. We have an opportunity. We have an opportunity every day to speak, to dialogue. When our feet hit the ground in the morning, we have a choice. To say, good morning, Lord, or, oh, Lord, it's morning. We have a choice. We have a choice. Matthew 21, 13, he said unto them, it's written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. Mark 13, 33 says, take heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. Luke 18 and 1, Jesus said, and spake a parable unto this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Philippians 4 and, 6 be, it says, uh, 4 and 6 says, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. Colossians 4 and 2 says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. 1 Peter 4 7 says, By the end of all, th- the, the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Listen, we've made this month a month of prayer and fasting for the Dabal Church. If you look at your bulletin, it's fasting times two plus prayer. I'm asking you to pray. I'm asking you to pray for a harvest. 
I'm asking you to push back the plate two times. Now, now I don't care how you, how you do it. If you do one meals, I know physically some are not able to do what, whatever you do. Somebody says, it's okay if I, if I fast. Or so. I, it doesn't matter. God will honor it. I'm just asking us to push back the plate. Push back the plate. Let's pray. Let's pray. An atmosphere of prayer. We've got to saturate this city with prayer. And prayer is communication. And in scripture, it's often, most often, with words. With that, I want to teach this morning on the model of prayer. This is one model, one way. If our ushers will come. What you're getting is a model. This is a model that I use. I use it. It's not the only model I use, but it's the model based upon the scripture, and I want to look at that scripture here uh, this, this morning. Go with me to the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, starting with the sixth verse. Matthew chapter 6, verses 6 through 15. I want us to read it out together and then we'll break it down but when you pray but thou when thou prayest I want you to notice that but but when you pray and Jesus doesn't say if you pray but when you pray prayer prayer was expected When, when, when Jesus spoke these words Now, we'll look at the outline in just a minute. Hang tight and stay with me. Look at the outline in a minute, but stay with me right now. Listen what what Jesus says, but when, but when, when you pray, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into your closet, and when you've shut the door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they'll be heard by their much speaking. Uh, Be not therefore like unto men. Be not ye therefore like unto, unto them. For your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. And after this manner therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As it is in, on earth, in earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil, from the literally the evil one. The evil one, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your father, heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Wow. The Gospel of Luke records that Jesus speaks this model prayer in response to their question, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. And I must confess that I argued with the Lord about this lesson. I I, I thought, well, this is a given. We know how to pray. We know how to pray. And then the Lord reminded me, Nobody in Pentecost taught you to pray. So so if you already know this, praise the Lord. But if you don't, I'm hoping that by the end here, you'll increase. Listen, James says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That lets me know there's also ineffectual prayers. If there's an effectual prayer, by uh, logic dictates there must be an ineffectual prayer. And oftentimes I wonder if our prayers are ineffective because we're not speaking. We're not clearly praying. My. Jesus says, but when you pray, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, you've got to pray. That's what he says. When you pray, it's expected. When you pray, when you pray, a condition, a Greek particle that indicates a habit. 
prayer when you pray. He says, pray this way. Our Father, which art in heaven. He's not asking you to repeat these words. What he's asking you to do, this is a model of prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven. When you enter into prayer, you're first going to enter in the gates with thanksgiving, right? Thank, thank, oh, I, this, is, this is how I do this model. I say, Lord, I thank you that I'm able to call you Father. Aren't you glad you're able to call? This is for believers. By the way, prayer, prayer like this is for believers, n- not for unbelievers. If you're an unbeliever, don't use this model. It has no meaning to you. But, but if, you, if, if you're a believer, if you've been baptized in his name and filled with the Holy Ghost, you can say our Father. Hallelujah. Isn't it great that you can call God your Father and you can come to him by virtue of the blood of Jesus Christ. And I begin my prayer by saying, Lord, I thank you that I can call you Father. I thank you, oh God. I thank you, Lord, that I've been, I'm able, the veil has been torn as a result of, of your sacrifice, Lord, on Calvary. Hallowed be thy name. You're going to hallow the name. We say, what in the world does hallow? It means set apart. And so what you're going to do here is set apart God's name. God's name is holy. In other words, you're going to praise him for what he, who he is and, and what he's done. And you hallow the names of God recorded in Scripture and that are fulfilled in the name of Jesus Christ. The covenant names and each correspond, each Old Testament name corresponds to the New Testament covenant relationship we have in Jesus Christ. For example, you notice on your outline, the area of benefit is sin, the forgiveness of sin. You're going to hallow that name. In the Old Testament, that that covers two names, Yahweh Sidkenu and Yahweh Makadish. Yahweh Sidkenu means the Lord is my righteousness. And that's what I do. I say, Lord, I, 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 I want to appropriate your name. You are my righteousness. I have no righteousness outside of you. And then Yahweh Makadish is the Lord who sanctifies. Jesus not only makes us righteous, he cleanses us by virtue of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Listen, those names, I'm not hallowing those names, only I recognize that these names were fulfilled in the person and name of Jesus Christ. Throw, throw that up there, brother, so you can see. I want you to be able to see it. So, so the first one, the first one is, is all the way down at the bottom here. Yahweh Sid Canoe. Yahweh Sid Canoe. Yeah, well, Yahweh said, Canu, the Lord's my righteousness. That comes out of Jeremiah 23 and 6. It's a compound name of Yahweh. And yet it's fulfilled in 1 Corinthians 1 and 30. It says Jesus is our righteousness. So what I do is I hallow those those names and I'm so thankful that I know that the one name, hallelujah, the one name given above every name, Jesus fulfills that. He is my righteousness. He is my sanctification. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want us to do that right now. Can you just lift your hands and hallow that name? Say, I'm thankful, oh Jesus. I'm thankful that you're my righteousness. I'm thankful that you're my sanctification. Hallelujah. I have no righteousness on my own. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 And and, and this corresponds with the new covenant benefit of true forgiveness of sins. I next I move to the next, the fullness of the Spirit. The Spirit is mentioned in the Old Testament. Yahweh, Shalom, Judges 6 and 24. That's a compound name. But I'm glad that I know 
that this compound name has been fulfilled and culminated in the name of Jesus. In Judges 6 and 24, he's Yahweh, my peace. But according, according to John 14, 27, Jesus said, Ah, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I'm so thankful, hallelujah, that he's, and peace is not just, it's not just a cessation of hostilities. When we talk about peace in the Hebrew mind, peace speaks of wholeness. It speaks of wholeness. I'm glad I've been made whole in Christ. I have the benefit of His Spirit. He is my peace. Not only that, He's also there. He's also with me. Amen. He is Yahweh Shema, the Lord who is there. Think about that. When you pray and you hallow that name, I'm thankful, Lord, that you're here with me right now. Can we, can we do that? Can we thank him for his peace? Hallelujah. If you've got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you have his peace. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that he'll never leave you or forsake you? He's there. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are, you are, hallelujah, with me. That's a benefit of the new covenant. Next, I move down to soundness. Yahweh Rophe, the Lord, the Lord who heals. How many's ever been healed by the Lord? And I tell the Lord, Lord, every, uh, every ache and pain I have, I thank you, Lord, but I know this that you're the healer. Uh, hallelujah. You're Yahweh Rophe. Exodus 15, 26, but James 5, 14 shows this fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Jesus is my healer. Is it Yahweh or is it Jesus? And the answer is yes, yes, yes. There's no confusion in these names. Understand, these na listen, Jesus is the one name. In the one name, uh, God revealed himself. He revealed himself in the Old Testament. Every time he wanted to reveal something about himself, after the revelation he gave Moses in Exodus chapter 3, what he did was he used a name to show, to show what he was. But listen, uh, listen, his name's not Yahweh today. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Yahushua. Yahweh is my Savior. Hallelujah. So he's my Savior. Thank you, Lord. He's my sanctified. Fire. Hallelujah. He's my peace. He's there and he's my healer. Oh, I'm glad I know who he is. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, yes. And then I move to the area of success, freedom from the curse of the law. Hallelujah. Yahweh Yiri. His provision shall be seen. You see the top one there. Uh, I, I've not got time to get into that, but well, I will a little bit. So, uh, yes, Lord. <laughs> and you know the story when Abraham offered up Isaac, right? And he offered up Isaac. And uh, Isaac said, I see the wood and the fire, but where is the lamb? You remember what he said? He said, son, God will provide himself a lamb. Hallelujah. For a burnt offering. And then there was a ram. Caught in the thicket. That was a temporary sacrifice. A ram's different than a lamb. What Abraham saw looked forward to what John would see. Here's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. What is interesting to me is when he said, Yahweh, Yiri, my provider. When Abraham did that, your provision will be seen. In other words, there was something future. I'm glad I know that something future. I have him abiding in me. I'm so thankful, hallelujah, that he is my provider. His provision will be seen. I may not be rich in goods, hallelujah, but I'm rich, hallelujah, because he's my provider. Hallelujah. If I'll just trust in him, he will provide. And I hallow that name in my life. Hallelujah. And then security. I have security in him. He is my banner. Yahweh Nisi. The Lord is my banner. Ah, but Jesus is my victory. And Yahweh Rohi. The Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 23 and 1. But Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Don't let anybody confuse you. Is it Yahweh 
Or is it Jesus? Yes, yes, yes. They're not different but one. It's our great God and Father Yahweh that became a human being in the person of Jesus Christ for our salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. After you open up the gates, thanksgiving, thanking God for who he is, you move to the next line. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In the Greek text, these are imperative verbs, which means it's kingdom of God come, will of God be done. And so I move from hallowing his names in my life to an assertive prayer. I pray that the kingdom of God would come over myself. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And at that time, I speak things like, Lord, I want to be pure. I want to be real. I want to be authentic. I want to be genuine. Kingdom of God come. Will of God be done in my life. I call it out. Praise God. Listen, listen. There's something to writing this down. I don't know if you do this, but I'd get you a prayer journal. And when you do this thing, when you sit down and you keep that page, you keep the page open. And when you're doing this at the same time, you're listening. Hallelujah. You're, you're listening and waiting for him to, if God can interrupt this at any time. Amen. He can interrupt it. Listen, and, and, and you're intentional about prayer. Be intentional about prayer just like you're intentional about going to work just as you're intentional about brushing your teeth amen you, you, that's how you pray that's how you pray that's how our old timers prayed that's how the early church prayed they just didn't speak nonsense they prayed in clear hallelujah Hallelujah. If you'll just pray and seek God's face, God will move. Praise God. Uh, in March, I'll share this. In March of 2019, I was praying and I was a little concerned because I had a meeting with the district board. So in March 28th, I had a meeting in April 18th with the board. And naturally, I was nervous. I had to meet them if I was going to be able to teach at TBC. And you can read that in my journal. I said, I'm a little concerned. And the Lord says, opposition will melt. Just tell your story. I wrote it down. Didn't think a thing about it. April 18th, Brother Prince, I came in that room. All them gentlemen were there. The brethren... And Brother Prince said, hey, before Brother Hongston, before we ask him any question, he said, I just want you to tell your story. I knew then, I, I looked it back up, and I saw that's exactly what the whole, listen, that's why it's so important to write things down. It gives a boost of faith to know that God Almighty is meeting you when you pray. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Lord. We serve a God that answers prayer. And that's not the first and only time. There are many pages in my journals that are blank. I don't hear nothing. Say, how come you don't hear nothing? Maybe I ain't listening. I don't know. But there are enough times to let me know that he's right there. Yeah. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. And then you know what I do? I move from myself to my family. I've got a, a special prayer for each of my family members. Each of my relatives, there's a prayer. And then I pray for this church. I pray for the church internationally. I then pray thy kingdom come. I want the kingdom of God to come. I want the kingdom of God of righteousness, peace, and joy to be in every apostolic church that's preaching truth. I do. And that's what I say. Kingdom of God come, will of God be done. And I pray for this local church. I pray for myself as pastor. I want to be an under-shepherd. Oh, God, I want, to be a, I want to be a faithful under-shepherd. Then I pray for the leadership. I 
pray for the leadership. I pray for the faithfulness of people. And I pray for a harvest of souls. Then I move to pray for our nation. Kingdom of God come. Will of God be done. Will of God be done. Can, can, can you see how you could really spend some time with the Lord using this? Others use the tablet. It doesn't matter what model you use. Here's a model. The point is nobody ever taught me how to pray. Just kind of assumed. Just kind of assumed. And you go for your nation, city, and God knows we need help in, in our nation. Pray, kingdom of God come. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem in accordance to Psalms 122 and verse 6. And then move to the next. Give us this day our daily bread. I, I pray that I'm in the will, God's will. I, I, and I'm specific with my requests. So specific with my requests. G give me John 5. 1 John 5. Not John. 1 John 5. Verse 14, 15. I believe it's God's will to prosper. I believe that. But I'm not a health wealth guy. Now, there are some things I want you to know about being specific in prayer. If you need a job, God will give you a job. I believe that. What, what you need, God will give you. Um, give, give me 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. Yeah, this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, according to his will, he hears us. You've got to pray according to his will. It, go ahead. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, of course, that's according to his will. We know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. I, I use this every time at the end of the prayer. Because you know what? Sometimes I might not be praying in his will. Sometimes we don't know how to pray. And so I pray and believe God. And believe God. Give us this day our daily bread. Specific. Be specific. Do you need something from God? Be specific and be tenacious. Don't give up. Don't give up. Pray. And then, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. I ask God to forgive me and help me to forgive and release others. Forgive, set my will. Lord, I, I say this, Lord, set my will. Set my will. Set my will to forgive those that sin against me. Why do I do that? Why do I do that? Because we read it. Because if I don't forgive, guess what? God don't forgive me. Say, well, I still talk in tongues. Well, God don't forgive you. Listen, listen, don't be deceived. You, you have got to, we've got to forgive. And I say, Lord, Lord, set my will. Set my will. So that when Ethan kicks me, I'm going to forgive him. Set my will. Set my will to forgive those that trespass against me. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It is here that I get ready for the day and I put on the whole armor of God. And, and, and sometimes, not every time, but many times, I literally do this. So it does say, well, it may look crazy. It might do it. But I say, Lord... I'm going to put on the belt of truth today. Help me to be, wear the belt of truth wherever I go. Wherever I go, let me know that I'm armed. I'm armed. I'm armed. I have the belt of truth. And Lord, help me put on the breastplate of righteousness. And sometimes I'll even act as if I'm putting on the breastplate of righteousness. God, that I may walk in truth. Hallelujah. That I may have your righteousness. Order my steps. I believe that a good man's steps are ordered by him. And, and I ask the Lord to order my steps today. And then I say, Lord, let my feet be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In other words, I stand ready. I'm kind of looking to meet somebody during that day. To speak a word. To speak his word. I, I'm prepared. 
I'm prepared. Uh, uh, to, that, that means you have to pay attention to others besides yourself, right? I'm, I'm looking for that downtrodden. I'm looking for that, that, that person behind the cash register that looks like they're having a rough day. I'm looking. I'm prepared. God, let, help my feet to be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace today. And then have the shield of faith. I realize that nothing can be done without faith. And, and, and it says overall, right? Uh, so, so I'm going to carry that shield of faith over every part of my armor because faith is how we operate in the spiritual realm. Lord, let me be armed. And God put on the helmet of salvation. How many has lots of voices? We hear things all the time. Some things are literal. Some things are not literal. We, we, we hear lies. We hear things. Negativity. I mean, all you have to do is open up the news feed on, on, on your phone. And I'll guarantee you, if you open it right now, uh, please don't. But if you did, it won't be, it won't be much positive there. Right. Most of it will be negative. R right? And so what we need to do is ask God to put on the helmet of salvation to protect our mind. The enemy is at work in this hour that we're living. We need to protect our mind. And we only do that through the helmet of salvation and knowing his word. Making his word a part of us. And help me to have the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. I'd like to say that this is what it's talking about. Uh, but I will say this, and it can be this, but the word is not logos here. In Ephesians 6, the word is rhema. The word is rhema. And, and, in other words, if you're reading the Bible, how many ever read the Bible and something jumped out at you? That's a rhema. That, that's a rhema. You've, read, you've looked at the written word, but it became alive to you. And then sometimes God will give you a word. He'll speak something to you and you write it down. And rest in that. Trust in that. That's a rhema, a living word. The word of God. Oh, God, give us rhema. Oh, God, speak to your people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help us to be people of your word. And then I end my prayer with a hedge of protection around myself and my family. And I claim Psalm 91 and 2 because I've made him my habitation, because I set my love upon him, and because I know his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then I end. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Hallelujah. And I go back into praise and thanking him all the time waiting for him to speak to me. Knowing and expecting God to speak to me. And he will speak. He told Philip one time in the 8th chapter of Acts, he said, hey, he didn't give him no impression. Ooh. No, it wasn't that. wasn't any of that. He said, go join yourself to the chariot. Pretty clear instructions, huh? Yeah. God can do the same. God can do the same. He's not stopped talking. He still talks. He talks through his word. He talks through the preaching of his word. But he also talks. He'll speak to you if you'll just pray. God, teach us to pray. The early church was a church of prayer. This is a Bible church. This is a church of the Bible. We must pray. We must pray. We must pray. If you use another outline, that's okay with me. But we must pray. We, it, not just random words, but we must pray. We must pray. Years ago, I received the Holy Ghost like a lot of folks did. After about an hour of, you know, getting hit and, and beat on while I'm praying. Instead of just asking, believing in faith that God would fill me. Ask in faith. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. You can be surprised. Surprised at his presence. 
and what he might say. Let's stand to our feet. Once again, let me reiterate that the Lord, of course, will never speak outside of his word. If the Lord tells you something, it will be in line with his word. If it is not, it is not of God. The word is the objective standard that we have. But God can speak through his word, and he can speak to you. Let's just lift our hands and thank him. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands and say, Lord, hallelujah. And I'm going to ask that these words that I've spoken today would be a rhema to somebody, a living word, a word that causes you to pray, a word that causes you to understand that you, you can pray. You can pray. You don't, you, you don't have to be anything special. You're already special because you're a child of God that gives you the right, hallelujah, to pray. Oh, God, I thank you right now. Come on, let's pray. Hallelujah. Let's seek the Lord. These altars are open. I'm going to open these altars if you want to seek his face. Hallelujah. God, make us a people of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. House of prayer. Oh, oh, oh. Lord, make, make me, me a house. Thank you, Lord. Make me a house of prayer. Make me a house of prayer. Oh, yes. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. A house of prayer. House of
a time. Day, night, night and day. Hallelujah. 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 H